Hey, welcome back as we get ready for another study in the Gospel of John and hopefully nobody will appear in the window behind me this week unless it's for a Pepsi. Uh, we're going to be looking in John chapter 4 and John chapter 5 this coming Sunday, last half of 4 and then chapter 5. So let me encourage you as you prepare to at least take time to reread chapter 4 and then chapter 5. If you want to go back a little further and just kind of get a run at it, that would be really good and kind of help you get a frame for... Uh, the places and the time, because that's always you know, one of the interesting things and, and hard things to uh, get a handle on as you read through uh, the Gospels. Uh, by the time we get to uh, chapter 4 and to chapter 5, uh, it, it's been a, a year or maybe just a little over since Jesus left his home in Nazareth to get baptized by John the Baptist. So you see how quickly time flies. And uh, kind of keep track of, of where he goes, because remember he went... Uh, he went down to Judea, which is basically the Jerusalem area, in and, and the last part of chapter 2 and chapter 3. And he was there really probably eight or nine months. And then he begins to move up through Samaria. We talked about that last Sunday in chapter 4. He spent you know two or three days maybe there in Samaria. And then he goes up to Galilee. And that's where we pick things up then in the last part of chapter 4. And then at chapter 5, he takes just a little a break to go back down to Jerusalem for a special feast. So you see some of the movements that where he goes, you can track that and keep idea of the time. It's like it's been a little over a year since he left home to go to uh, be baptized by John. And during the chapter 4 and chapter 5 study, we'll find the second and the third miraculous signs that John pinpoints and puts in his album. Go back and see if you can find what the first one was. That's listed there in John. Maybe you remember off the top of your head. If not, go back and find what was the first sign that John mentioned. The second sign takes place in uh, the same place, in Cana. And that's the second sign there where he, uh, where he performs a miracle. And then the third one is in chapter 5. And remember, there's a lot of miracles that Jesus performed that aren't recorded in John's book. And John said that was true. So there's a lot of stuff he didn't put in, but the, the pictures he did put in the album were for what purpose? Do you remember? He said, I've written these things that you might that you might believe. I've taken these photos, I've selected these out of the box, put them in the picture album, so they could help you to believe. And that's what John's want to accomplish as he puts these miraculous signs in the book for us to read and for us uh, to learn from. So I want you to think about this phrase as you read through, it's found in chapter 4, the man took Jesus at his word. The man took Jesus at his word. Just kind of keep that in mind as you read chapter 4, as you read the account in chapter 5. The man took Jesus at his word. He, he trusted him. And he acted upon what, what Jesus wanted him to do. And uh, so when you read through chapter 4 and chapter 5, then think about these questions. Took his word about what? Because there's a lot going on. A wide variety of things, all the way from Jesus' claim to heal someone to Jesus' claim of deity and authority. Well, we take Jesus at his word about these things. Second question, how did people react? Not just the ones that Jesus spoke to about, uh, will you believe me that I'll heal your son or that I'll heal you, but how did people around them react when they took Jesus at his word? Then the third question then is, where do you need to take Jesus at his word? What's going on in your life? What promise has he made? What truth has he revealed? that you need to take Jesus at his word and trust him. What's that going to mean, mean for you and for me as we try to apply that to our lives? Again, these things are written that we might believe. You know, um, we trust a lot of people. We take a lot of people at their word in this life. The guy who cooks our meals at the restaurant, the mechanic who fixes our car, the guy who builds our house, uh, the doctor, uh, the bank. They say, take, take me at my word, and, and we do. Well, we take Jesus at his word. It's, it's kind of incredible that in chapter 5, Jesus, Son of God, kind of gives a list of references. Hey, if you need reasons to believe, to take me at my word, you know, here's some. But will we take Jesus at his word in the most important things in life? I'll see you Sunday. Thanks.